God's word, faithfully preached, is his comprehensive equipment for changing lives, delivering them from the shackles of sin, the flesh, and the world, and transforming them into useful vessels through whom Jesus can pour out his blessings. Living Seed invites you to a feast of the truth as God's servant brings to us the word of life. For copies of this message, other books, tapes, DVDs, and VCDs, and any further help in your discipleship, call or visit. Let's quickly dash. Can we dash to Colossians? Let's quickly dash to Colossians. I think you have NIV, sir. Yes. Uh, stand up and read. Since you died with Christ to the basic principles of this world, uh -huh. why, as though you still belong to it, uh -huh. do you submit to its rules? Go on. 21 now. Uh, because those rules have not finished. Do not handle. Uh -huh. Do not taste. Uh -huh. Do not touch. Now, every man that wanted to overcome the flesh after many years of struggle they have developed rules eh? many of us we develop rules do you know that for some of us because you knew that you can't stay with a woman and not fall into problem it was a rule that don't shake sisters. Eh? And so when you are coming and a sister is coming, you just do your hand like this. Good morning, sister. Now, you see, it was wonderful. There were rules of holiness that we were practicing when we have not seen the cross. If a sister is sitting there, according to John Wesley, when he was starting the Holy Club, because these were people that were, they were concerned about holiness, one of his rules was that when an opposite sex is standing talking with you, there should be a minimum distance of at least six feet. <laughs> so you can imagine these are honest brothers. Honest. They wanted to experience the power of God. Do you know how many times some of us, in order to overcome our lusts, we net down on stones just to punish our body. Now, they all have a show of wisdom. Yes. But let me ask you a question. Did it deliver you from, from the flesh? No. <laughs> Don't touch this. Don't undo this. Don't look at this. Don't be this. Don't go here. Did it in any sense deliver you from the work of the flesh. It has nothing to do with it. I discovered that in those days, while we were still looking for help, we were told, don't miss your weekly fasting. So we actually practice fasting every week, at least two times, for some of us three times a week. And what are we fasting about? It is so that we can be victorious. Now, listen, you know, the, the, the disciples of the Pharisees, they came to ask Jesus, why is it that our own disciples are fasting and your own are eating? Do you know that Jesus did not abolish fasting? He told them, he said, they will fast. But their reason for fasting will be different. I'm, going, I'm still fasting now. 
But I do not fast to complete what Jesus did not complete on the cross. Because at the cross, all matter was settled. So that scripture began to ask a question. He said, since you have died with Jesus Christ to the elementary principles of this world, did you notice that the word since you have died is very prominent in a NIV there? We're going to check it later. How did King James put it? If you have died, yes, Wherefore, if ye be dead with Christ, if you be dead with Christ uh -huh. from the rudiments of the world, yes. why, as though living in the world, uh -huh. are ye subject to ordinances? Uh -huh. Touch not, uh -huh. taste not, uh -huh. handle not, uh -huh. which all are to perish with the using, uh -huh. after the commandments and doctrines of men, uh -huh. which things have indeed a soul of wisdom in will worship. And humility and neglecting of the body, not in any honor to the satisfying of the flesh. Do you know that some of us, we deliberately decided not to bath for three days. We were neglecting the body. <laughs> we were mortifying the body so that we can be holy. Because we thought what made pride to keep manifesting our lives is because we are handsome. So we think that to be an handsome person is completely contrary to holiness of life. How many of you know that that is still troubling some of us up to today. You just believe that if you should dress well and you should be neat, that pride will overtake you. So what did you do? You dress shabbily. And you are dressing shabbily not because you want to honor Christ. It's because you want to kill Mr. Flesh. I don't know whether I'm getting at you. You see, the, you know the reason why we need to be analytical is because the same desire to be holy is correct. But the means that God had established in Christ Jesus, why is it that I'm not, I'm not experiencing it? I don't know. Say, my people perish for lack of knowledge. And he said, you shall know the truth. And the truth shall set. He said, sanctify them by thy truth. Thy word is truth. I wish we would let the word of God do a very deep work in our spirit. We are going to see other scriptures, but we must establish something here. Knowing what has taken place at Calvary. Let me inform you that all those rules and regulations, they only indulge the flesh. Do you remember that when we follow those rules and regulations, we, we became more proud? <laughs> Do you understand that? And then we were very critical. The brother that did not fit into what we are talking about, we immediately looked at him with an eye and said, is that how to be a Christian? Sister, is that how to be a Christian? And we walked. You know, we were walking sanctimoniously, but yet Mr. Flesh is rejoicing inside of us. And from all our experiences, we knew that we didn't get victory by those efforts. Victory only came when we saw the cross. Victory over sin only comes at the cross. 
So you see that scripture was consistent. Now I read it from, from all these other versions. That version say they lack any value. That's NIV. In restraining sensual indulgence. Now I told you that living Bible is very funny and we can enjoy it. Since you died, as it were, with Christ. And this has set you free from following the world's idea of how to be saved. By doing good and obeying various rules. Why do you keep right on following them anyway? Still bound by such rules as not eating, tasting, or even touching certain foods? Such rules are mere human teachings. For food was made to be eaten and used up. <laughs> These rules may seem good. For rules of this kind require strong devotion and are humiliating and hard on the body. But they have no effect when it comes to conquering a man's evil thoughts and desires. They only make him proud. <laughs> Sister, did you understand something there? All right. So let's go now to chapter 3. Chapter 3 from verse 1. Since then, you have been raised with Christ. Now, now, excuse me. Did you notice that every issue we have been reading? Have you noted now? Since, 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 since. They were not asking us to live a different life. But to walk with a recognition of what God did. I want to emphasize that the Christianity that does not take cognizance of the finished work of Christ at Calvary is, is a bastardized Christianity. It's a Christianity that is reducing the value of Christ but by pretending to honor him. Are you getting me, sir? Go ahead now. Since. Since then you have been raised with Christ, set your hearts on things above. Now, excuse me. Why should the believer set his heart on things above? Is it so that he can be raised with Christ? Let's talk, let's talk, look. Eh? It's because he has already been raised. That is, you know, God is simply saying the only normal thing for you now as a Christian is to set your affection where you belong. We are not asking you to set your affection on things above so that you can become an heavenly man. Why is God asking you to set your affection on the things above? Because you are raised. That's where you really belong. It is a contradiction for this man who had died to sin and to the things of the world to keep looking at the things of the world. It's a contradiction. Do you understand what we are talking about now? So you see now that as far as God is concerned, he is no more struggling with your old man. As far as he is concerned, what has happened to the old man now? He's finished. He's dead. But now that the old man died, he lived a life in us. He did many things in us. In fact, we were more familiar with him than the new life. Am I correct now? So the man now that a new man has entered into him, we need to train him. Is that all right now? We cannot train a man whose old man is still alive. You will be wasting your time. So can I say like this? Training in holiness, genuine training in holiness, only begins here. The biblical holiness is not the one that is struggling to, be, to, to attain here. 
is the one that has said, yes, now that I'm a new man, now that I'm a new Christian man, now that the old man is no more here, let me live the life of the Spirit. Now, yes, set your affection. Set your heart on things above. Yes, sir. Where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Uh -huh. Set your minds on things above. Uh -huh. Not on earthly things. Yes. For you died. Eh? For you died. No, 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 we didn't hear him. Did we hear him? Yes. Are you reading your own Bible? What did he say? For you died. The King James said, you are dead. Good news said, you have died. Yes. For you died, and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. Go to verse 5 now. Put to death, therefore, whatever belongs to your earthly nature. Good. Sexual immorality. Let's stop there now. We will read it. Have we followed NIV to that point? Let's try King James, sir. King James. Give him King James. Yes, sir. Seek those things which are above, where Christ is dead on the right hand of God. Two, set your affections on things above, not on things on the earth. Three, for ye are dead and Excuse your me. life. The word for, in verse three, what does it mean? It's, it's, it's what? It's a cursa clause. All right. But I thought you would have just used one simple word for those of us who didn't understand big English. <laughs> eh? Because. It's because, Abby. He said, read again. Read again, sir. Read again for us. For ye are dead. Because you ye are, are dead. dead. Yes. And your life is hid with Christ in God. So I'm asking you, why should I set my affection on things above and not on things on the earth? I'm not alive. Because I'm dead. Listen now. <laughs> you see, on this other side, on this other side, they set their affection not on the things on the earth so that they can die. Are you understanding? But on this side, we set our affection on the things above and not on the things on the earth because we have dead, we have died. You know, it looks alike, but it's not the same. It took years for me to know that I'm setting my affection on the things above. Not because if I don't, my old man will not die. That one has happened. But if I don't, I will be causing contradiction for the new life I carry now. Do you understand that now? The new life I carry now, his own things are above. Why do I compel him to be doing what he doesn't want to do? Am I communicating with you? Before, listen now, we were told not to watch television. <laughs> eh? And the reason is that there is a devil in that box that will make you sin. That's it. That's true. But you see, actually, the man that makes you sin it's not that television, no. It's inside. But television provokes him. <laughs> are, are, are you understanding that now? Okay. Now, can I then say, because my old man is dead, I can be watching television anyhow? No. I'm not watching television now because the man that I carry now does not derive his own entertainment from that. It's not as if, if you watch television, oh, ah, 
you are watching television, you are going to go to hell now. That's not the reason. I, I, I wish God will help us. That unfortunately, we are preaching grace, but preaching legalism. All because we didn't see the man at Calvary. You will know the tremendous thing that we are using to replace what Jesus achieved at Calvary. Simply because we have been overwhelmed with the tyranny of the flesh for many years. And all the method we use at least to keep him in check. The flex has left us with certain reflex that we would normally prefer to keep employing those methods that, that never helped us. We want to keep returning to them instead of holding to the head, which is Christ Jesus. You know it's a very little issue, but it determines whether we will walk every day with God in victory or we will keep falling and rising, rising and falling. Because once we look away from the man of Calvary where we were delivered, we have no other basis to even stand anywhere. Read verse 4 and 5. Then we will go on. When Christ, who is our life, yes. shall appear, mm. then shall you also appear with him in glory. In glory. 5. Mortify therefore your members, which are upon the earth. Can I ask all of us now, in verse 5, what is the key word in verse 5? Eh? I know. I know. Sincerely speaking, I know the word that you will quote <laughs> is mortify. Put to death! Put to death. But what is the key word there? Therefore, you know, because you are dead. Are you hearing me? Because you have been raised to live with Christ in the heavenlies and because your affection is no more down here, it's up there. So what do you then do to all the instruments Mr. Flesh used when he was here? What do you do? Pack them out, destroy them, mortify them. I don't know whether I'm collecting something from you. Do you know that when I, when we moved to Peace House, the Peace House in the in town, that that block, that our first building was a bakery. It was a bakery. The owner of that building used it to bake bread. Eh? When we got in there, my own office where I sit and where my wife used to sit is the oven. There was an oven with chimney that was built there. Are you getting me now? And then down here, there was a store of baking pans. You know, the bread bakers. Uh -huh. Loads of it. Then the outside building, I turned it to a toilet, but that was their generator house. Are you getting me now? Now, when the owner of the house was there and was using it for bakery, if I went there, and I want to turn his uh, generator house to a toilet. What will he do? There's going to be a tug of war. Why will it be a war? The owner is still there. Yeah, so he's occupying it. And no servant can serve two masters. But then, when the owner, the man that used to be owner, when he packed out, when he changed, and we bought over the place. A new owner has come. 
Now, you see, when we bought it, we bought everything. All the baking pans were left there. But since I am not in the business of baking bread, what did I do? I want to ask you, is it, did I pack them out because they were not useful to the former man? No. All right. Did I pack them out in order for the former owner not to kill me? Why am I packing it now? Because it's not useful to me and I'm the owner of this place now. So when I said, break the generator house, and we turn it to a toilet, because that's all we need. No argument. Those that were sympathizers with the former owner, when they, they came, they said, eh? Ah! Indeed, the old man has passed away. Behold, the new has come. Do you understand what we are talking about now? So, for example, I'll tell you something that happened for years. Because we want you to understand what that scripture is talking about. For a long time, you know, there was an open, something like, look at garage. Where they used to drive in a trailer of a flower. So in front of that particular garage, they, they used iron door and they inscribed on it, bakery. They wrote the name of their bakery. Now, do you know that we have settled in that office for more than five years, but I never noticed that the man actually left an inscription in front of the door, heart bakery, bakery. So, for many times, people walked into the office. Hello? We want to buy bread. They were right. Why? Because that's the picture. The external impression of what it has been used for was baking bread. So when they can say, excuse, can we have bread here? It became my duty. It's not a struggle. It's just my duty to walk out to them and say, oh, sorry, we don't make bread here. The man that makes bread has passed away. Behold, behold, come inside here. Everything is new. You know, this is where you used to tip your flower before. Now we are having fellowship here. Behold, this was your former generator. I say, yes, 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 yes. Now is our toilet. <laughs> Behold. Do, do, do you understand what I'm dealing with now? You see, because when our old man died and a new man came to live in us, the old tabernacle didn't change. Do you understand? The old tabernacle that the former old man used is still what we are going to use. And this has been tailor-made before to do certain things for the old man. But now he is dead. What do I do? What should I do? I pack his things out. There are some of the things he has left that are more of permanence. They are fixed. If I do not do a deliberate breaking. But you see, I'm not breaking it in order to break the old man. The old man is dead. A new man is here. But the old man, when he used to be here, he left some permanent imprint. That I can't just do like this. I need to break it. Do you hear what we are dealing with now? So he said, therefore, mortify your members that are not, pack them out. Now, that mortify, we are not mortifying it in order for the old man to die. 
Why are we actually mortifying all the deeds of the flesh? Is because he died. Do you understand Christian life? You see, on the other side, it will look as if it's the same thing. It's not the same thing. One is because the cross has taken place. The other one is the struggle of a man that is looking for deliverance. So what did we do? We robbed off the name. We removed things. In fact, you know what I did in order to finally finish the problem? I removed that, that gate completely. Rebuilt the wall. Turn it to a window. If you go to the office now, it is a two-bedroom flat where somebody is living. Since then, they have had rest. Some of you, even though your old man died, you may never have rest though, until you pack out all his furniture. Is that all right now? And I tell you, this is progressive. What did I say? Progressive. Progressive in the sense that there are so many things that Mr. Flesh did not only do, but he set in our mind as a way of doing things. How many of you use alarm clock in your house? And you set it, what time do you set your alarm clock? 4 a.m. 4 a.m. Now, since last Monday that you were here, was the alarm clock ringing? <laughs> in my mind, it's uh -uh. No, the alarm clock at home was it ringing no. whenever it's four o'clock. Yes. Yes. It's ringing, but you are not at home. Do you know that when it's four a.m., the thing will ring? The anybody that doesn't know that he has traveled. What is the impression they have? Yeah. That the man is at home. Now, I'll tell you the truth. When Mr. Flesh lived here, he had set some certain things as standard. I'll, I'll give you an illustration. Do you know that if somebody sees you and does like this? To you. Without him talking, there is something in you that stood up and said, me, <laughs> myself, you also. <laughs> what caused that? Because the old man already said, when anybody does like this, he's abusing your mother. Are you understanding that now? So because it's already set in your mind, even though the old man that set it has died. But the setting has not been removed. So anytime you see something like this, even when he is not there, your mind, you say, is abusing your mother. And then you say, oh, but I'm a new Christian man now. I will not, I will not fight. I will not retaliate. Do you know why you're having to go through all that reorientation? Because you already believed that when he did like this, he's abusing you. It's an insult. But now, let the new man remold your mind. So that when somebody does like this, in my own mind now, this does not mean anything. In fact, when you do me like this, I just smile. <laughs> and I wave you. Because as far as I'm concerned, you are just doing like this to me. And I have seen it terribly happen. He does like that. I said, <laughs> thank you. He said, no, I'm not greeting you. I'm not greeting you. <laughs> I said, thank you very much. He said, no, 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 no. I said, but, you see. The difference is not that, listen now. The difference is not the issue of this. Is that I have now reset my mind. Is that all right? Yes. Along the line of the new man, 
that is living here now. If we have space, we will have now said, Romans 12 now says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God. Did you notice that even that passage has a therefore? Do you know that everywhere God is demanding for your surrender now, there's a therefore. The basis of our surrender now is because the old man died and we were bought with a price. And it's only reasonable, sir, to hand over your body to him who for your sake died and rose again. Do you understand that now? So, but to reset all that Mr. Flesh left in our mind, sincerely speaking, it's going to be progressive. We can't do it in one day. In fact, as you are growing, you start discovering some settings of the old man that you didn't know was there. Can I give you an illustration? You know that, sit down, sir. Do you know that in some of our culture, when you are hungry, you expect your wife eh, to bring food. Not only to put it on table, to kneel down and do like this. Even when you are not there, you are expecting that you should do like that. All right. Now, so the next time she brought the food, she did like this and didn't need them. In those days, the old man inside said, eh? You even want to put it in my nose. <laughs> eh? Lack of home training. If your mother trained you very well, you will have known how to serve a husband. That you don't carry food over somebody's nose. Now take it back to the kitchen and bring it properly. <laughs> Do you understand that? That's the old man. But you see, the old man in that, you may think is our culture. Mr. Flesh did not only work in you. He also established the culture that makes his activity conducive. But now he is dead. But all the settings are here. What are we going to do now? We will mortify them. We will start destroying all the settings, all the standards that we did not learn from Christ. And in that, sir, is gradual. It's progressive. Praise the Lord. We can't say, oh, because that happened, I finished with all cleansing. No. Cleansing will continue. But cleansing is continuous because something has happened. Now, I'm reading all those scriptures. I want to give you like an assignment. You just now start reading all the scriptures. You will just discover that that's the language. That's the language. You go to First John. You will see that that's the language. It said you have overcome them. Because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. You have overcome them. He didn't say you will. He didn't say if you worked hard, you will. Hallelujah. Amen. You listen to Paul, he said, I have been crucified with Christ. But nevertheless, I'm living, I'm walking up and down, yet not I. But who? But Christ, who lives in me. Say, so the life I now live in the body is not my life. It's the life that Christ lives in me. And I live this life now 
by the faith in him, in the Son of God, who loved me and died for me. Have you come across that? Galatians 2.20 How can I walk continuously in victory? It must be because I know. I am knowing. I keep knowing every day. And excuse me, this knowing is the task. I wish we would be understanding the word of God when he said, looking unto Jesus. The author and the finisher of our faith. We are not just looking unto him for example. We are not just looking unto him as an illustration, as a pattern of the way to live. We are also looking unto him for strength as the basis of where we are going. He is the author of this new life. He is the finisher of it. I must keep looking. You know my, my, the way I want to end here. I saw Peter inside that boat. You remember Peter in the boat with all the disciples? When they saw Jesus walking on top of the water, in the midst of storm, yet he was victoriously walking on water. Ah! They say, no, 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 no. He can't be any man. He's a ghost. Nobody can live like that. What did Jesus say? Cool down. Be of good courage. I am the one. Don't be afraid. Peter said, if you are the one, bid me to come. That was a practical matter here. Bid me to come. And Jesus said, come. Can you imagine? It has never happened for any man to walk on water. But because he beats him to come, he took the first step. The second step. The third step. The first step. Looking. Don't worry yourself about how you will be victorious in 20 years' time. That's not your business. Some of you, you will be asking questions that are not important. You will be saying, hey, hey, does this mean that we will not sin again? We are not saying that. If you want to sin, you can go and sin. <laughs> and there is a way for you to go back to sin. It's by looking away from Jesus, from the cross, from what he did. And go and employ other methodology, you will suddenly see that it's only in Christ that we are victorious. Outside him, you are nothing. So, the man is like this. And he was walking. He was walking. He walked. Smoothly was walking. But the only thing is that he was looking at him. Every step of the way. For one day he walked. Two days he walked. Three days he had walked. This is why I don't believe in those who boast. And say once saved. Save forever. That's not my business here. My business is that every day. Every day. Every day I'm looking at him. And if I'm walking with him. I know when he comes, he will pick me up. Yeah. Suddenly, what happened to Brother Peter? He removed his eyes from Jesus. And he began to sink. But you know what he did? He said, Master, save me! Excuse me, please. Yes, it had happened at Calvary. But in case your eyes moved away from Calvary, and you are sinking. Don't be too proud to shout, Save me! And he will grab you. And as he grabbed the young man, he asked him, Why did you doubt? The question is, Why did you doubt? We were saved by faith. We were sanctified by faith. We live victoriously by faith. He said, and this is the victory that overcomes the world. Even what? Our faith. That's all. Nothing more. 
not our struggle, not our intelligence, not our intellect, but our faith in him, the crucified. Not in our prayer. Are you hearing me? Some of us, you shifted your faith from Jesus to your prayer. You know, we have been encouraging us to pray. Are you hearing me? I believe in prayer and I want you to pray. But prayer is not the reason for our victory. It's Jesus. Are you hearing me? Yes, please pray. Spend time to pray. Spend hours in your personal quiet time. It was important. But let me inform you. Our victory, our salvation, and all that we could be did not depend on how much we prayed. It was because of what he did. Is that all right now? The work was finished. We are only working in it and working into it and growing in it and discovering it more and more and more and more. Hallelujah. You know, our natural man will like to look for something apart from Christ to hold. And he can hold on your prayer. Say, ah, we thank God what I prayed. Please don't add anything to Jesus. The Bible says, For in him dwells the fullness of the Godhead completely. And you are what? Complete in him. Can we please uh, respond to what Jesus is doing? <laughs> if we send you forth from here, the reason why you can now go everywhere you are going by the grace of God and you will be sure that the sin that used to wreck your life before won't wreck you again is because something happened. That we know that our old man was crucified with him. But then how do we go on living from now? We keep living in the reality of that. And as we are moving life, we meet things that Mr. Flesh had put there before. What do we do? We knock off. Do you know that there are some dresses that it was Mr. Flesh that asked you to, to sew it? I hope you know. Eh? Now, one day you open your wardrobe. You wanted to wear it. There was a reason why you sewed that dress before. The man that used to wear that dress is now dead. There's a new man here, the Lord Jesus Christ. And as you want to put on that dress, you see him and say, mm -mm 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 -mm. I don't wear this. What do you do to that dress? Take it away. Throw it out. Because your new man doesn't want it. Are you understanding that now? Why are we throwing away that dress? It's because the old man that used to wear it died. And the new man doesn't want to inherit it. We throw it away. But before now, we threw away those dress so that we can be holy. Did you get the difference? Now, I throw away dresses now because the new man inside of me said, mm -mm, mm -mm, I don't wear this. The man for whom you sold this died and I don't want to wear his garment. So what did I do now? I threw it away because I love the new man in me. May the Lord give you this understanding. Amen. Read on, sir. You just stopped in verse 5. Read on. Verse 6 now. Yes, sir. Because of this, the wrath of God is coming. You used to walk in these ways. Did you see the Bible? What did he say? You used to. You used to. Please accept what God says about you. What did I say? Except what God says. What God says about you is the truth. You used to, as far as God is concerned, is a past. Accept that. Believe it. Walk in the reality of it, sir. Yes? You used to walk in these ways. Yes. In the life you once lived. Uh-huh. But now. But now. You must rid yourselves of all such things as this. Uh-huh. Anger, anger, rage, yes, malice, yes, slander, yes, and filthy language from your lips. Uh -huh. Do not lie to each other. Uh -huh. Since you have taken off your old self. Did you hear that now? 
Did you hear that now? Excuse me, why will you no longer be angry? Since you have taken off. Since you have taken off the old man. You see, please read the word of God every day in its context. If you are reading the Bible simply as it is, our life will change. God's word is not as sophisticated. Except that we have read many ideas into it. Since you have put off the old man, then put off it, all, all his anger, malice, all of that. The man that used to use that was the old man and he died. Yes, sir. Do not lie to each other since you have taken off your old self with, yes. it, with its practices. Yes. And have put on the new self, uh -huh. which is being renewed in knowledge in the image of its creator. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, excuse me. Did you notice that there's something progressive about the new creation? It's being renewed in knowledge after the image of his creator. So you see, when people talk of perfection, I don't understand the language. I understand that, yes, something new has begun in my life, but he is growing. Is being renewed every day by the word of God. I want to feed it so that I can grow. My picture is that a, a new baby is born. Can I ask you, when a baby is born today, how many breasts does he come with? How many fingers does he have? Does the baby, if it's a girl, does he have womb the day he was born? Eh? Or did you think it is feeding and training and exercise that we add the womb to that girl? That when she was born, she didn't have womb. But we are praying and we are trusting God. And as we are feeding this baby very well, we are told that the womb will grow tomorrow. Eh? What do you understand? It's already there. Sir, can I tell you? Every attribute of Jesus Christ is already in here when we received him. Everything that Jesus Christ, our Lord, is, is in you here. So, but how does he grow? How does he, you know, manifest? By the renewing. Yes, sir. Being renewed day by day. In knowledge. Yes? In the image of his creator. Yes. Here there is no Greek or Jew. In this new creation, there's no Greek, there's no Jew. It's not a Yoruba man. What happened to the Yoruba man? That one died. The one that is here is the Lord from heaven. He doesn't come in with the culture of Yoruba or with a... a uh, Ibo or Bachama mm -mm 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 -mm. is a new creation. But living in the old tabernacle that the Bachama man used. Oh, you are not with me. The man in me is not a Yoruba man. No. He's not a Yoruba man. He's the Lord from heaven. Is a new creation man. Complete. And in this new creation, yes, there is no Jew or Greek. Go ahead, brother. Circumcised or uncircumcised. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Barbarian, Scythian, slave or free. But Christ is all and is in all. And is where? In all. Go ahead. Therefore, as God's chosen people. Did you notice another key word there? Therefore. What is it? Therefore. Go ahead now. Therefore. As God's chosen people. Uh -huh. Holy and dearly loved. Uh -huh. Clothe yourselves with compassion. Uh -huh. Kindness. Mm -hmm. Humility. Mm -hmm. Gentleness. Mm -hmm. And patience. Why do we put on all of this? Because we are, the new man is already here. This is his own way of life. Do you understand that, sir? You see, it is, you know, when they say, this Christian is humble. To me, it's superfluous. 
What else do you expect Christ, the new Christian man, to be? I'm asking. What do you expect him to be? He will, he's, he will just be himself. You see, you are going to put on humility, um, compassion, kindness, gentleness, patience. Not so that you can become... Did you notice that now? Why are we putting it on? Because of who we are. Let's understand the biblical context, even of our spiritual growth. We are not putting on humility so that we can become. Uh -uh. It's because we are God's chosen people now. The new Christian man has been put in here now. That's why humility is his way of life. Patience is his way of life. When we see a dog, are you hearing me? Are you hearing me? No. When we see a goat eating meat, what will happen to all of us? We say, ah, no, this is a strange goat. Why did we say that? Because goat doesn't eat meat. Goat is herbivorous. It's not, it's not uh, omnivorous. So, bro, this new man, his natural life is humility. Can we let him manifest? Mm -hmm. eh? It is holiness. Can we let him live his life? Go ahead, read it, sir. Verse 13. 13. Deal with each other. Uh -huh. And forgive whatever grievances you, you may have. have against one another. Uh -huh. Forgive as the Lord forgave you. Uh -huh. And over all these virtues, yes. put on love, uh -huh. which binds them all together in perfect unity. Yes, sir. Let a peace of Christ rule in your heart. Uh -huh. Since as members of one body, you were called to peace. Did you see another sense there? Go ahead. And be thankful. Uh -huh. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Uh -huh. As you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom. Yes. And as you sing psalms, psalms. Mm -hmm. and spiritual songs with mm -hmm. gratitude in your hearts to God. Yes, sir. And whatever you, you do. do whether in word or deed yes do it all uh -huh. in the name of uh -huh. the lord jesus christ uh -huh. giving thanks to god the father through him whom are we giving instruction to here the new man god is not giving this instruction to someone in whom the old man is alive god is not wasting his time because he knows he can't do it eh? Can you tell the old man to be gentle? Shall we walk in the reality of what Jesus did? Can you go back out of this meeting and be able to say, I'm a new Christian? Old things have passed away. Behold, all things are new. So then they say, why are you behaving as if you are not a human being? Actually, I am not. The human being died, actually. There's a new man here. Allow that life. Let Jesus, please, live his life. This has been Living Seed. For further inquiry or counsel, contact P.O. Box 971, Boko, Benue State, Nigeria. Telephone numbers 0703 0363659. 0808-5150-610 Email address lsmedia at livingseed.org or visit our website at www.livingseed.org See you next week.